In this video, I'm going to share the five tips you need to know if you want to stand out from other candidates in a coding interview. Competition is high nowadays, with thousands of candidates applying for a job and maybe a handful getting an interview, you need to be able to put your best foot forward. The thing is, I've yet to see a video covering the same topics I'll be covering in this video, which is surprising to me because in the eyes of the interviewer, these tips can make or break you. Now, before I dive in, I should say that these tips are not in any particular order, but they are all equally important. In any case, let's start with tip number five, which is admitting when you don't know something. One of the most undesirable traits in a candidate is when they act like they know something when they clearly don't. Interviewers hate it when you do this because the whole point of an interview is to assess your skills, and if you pretend to know something you don't, then you're basically lying to the interviewer. Nobody likes being lied to. And to be fair, this is something that has probably happened to all of us at some point. I know I'm guilty of doing this. The thing is, seasoned interviewers can sniff this out pretty quickly, so don't think you can pull one over on them. If you admit to not knowing something, then the interviewer will respect you more because at least you can say so, instead of trying to cover up the fact that you don't. Now, this is the part where I say it depends. For example, if you aren't familiar with a certain JavaScript framework, then that's not a big deal. People pick up new frameworks all the time. But if your interviewer asks you the difference between const and let, and you don't know, that's a red flag. This can be avoided by just taking the time to understand the fundamentals of whatever language or framework you're working in. Admitting you don't know something is the first step to learning something new. And in the ever-changing world of tech, having the ability and curiosity to constantly learn will always be a favorable trait interviewers look for. All right, that's gonna do it for tip five. Now let's move on to tip number four, which is writing clean code. I know this one might seem obvious. I mean, if you're in a coding interview, of course you wanna write clean code, but don't mistake getting the correct solution to a coding problem as writing clean code. There's more to it. Interviewers are looking at how you write your code, everything from the names you choose for variables or functions to how you abstract things. These seemingly small things show the interviewer that you pay attention to details. The first way you can show off good coding skills is to write dry code. Dry stands for don't repeat yourself. This phrase was coined by Dave Thomas and Andy Hunt in their book, Pragmatic Programmer. As the name suggests, you wanna write code once. You want to avoid writing repetitive or duplicate code as much as possible. One of the ways you can implement this during your coding interviews is to make use of helper functions. Instead of writing a function that does three different things, you can instead abstract some logic out onto its own function, especially if that logic can be used elsewhere. An example could be if you're working on a problem in which you need to traverse a tree in a depth first search fashion, and you need to perform some type of logic. You can choose to write a helper function for the depth first search itself. Now, your main function can focus on performing the right logic and just simply call the helper function with the right parameters to perform a depth first search on your tree. The benefit of this is that the depth first search function can now be used elsewhere if need be. In a real world code base, that function would now be easier to test too. Writing helper functions is a simple way you can showcase dry code to your interviewer. But writing dry code is only one part of showing good coding skills. There is something else that candidates do that sabotages themselves and they don't even know that they're doing it. You've probably done it during an interview before. I'm talking about bad variables and function naming. You know, using placeholder names for variables like a, b, x, etc., or undescriptive function names. Either way, I know this stuff might not seem that important, but in an interview, you want to take every opportunity possible to put your best foot forward. And focusing on writing clear, relevant variable and function names is one way to do that. By doing this, you signal to the interviewer that you care about the code you write and additionally are conscious of other developers. Think about it. If you're in a job setting and you're writing code with generic variable and undescriptive function names, you can imagine your colleagues are going to have a tough time making use of your code, let alone understanding it. A general rule of thumb is to try and embody behaviors that would look good in an actual job setting in your interviews. So those are a couple of things you can try implementing in your next coding interview. Trust me, I know they seem small and insignificant, but it's the small details that your interviewer will notice and that'll go a long way. All right, now let's move on to tip number three, which is having good communication skills. But what does having good communication mean during a coding interview? 
Well, it means that you keep the interviewer looped into your train of thought. This includes voicing your thoughts out loud or asking clarifying questions. As far as I'm concerned, this is a must do. There is nothing worse than being given a coding problem and just sitting there pondering it in silence. The reason for this is that you aren't giving the interviewer insight into your thought process. They want to see how you approach solving a problem. If you jump in head first, then they might think that you're reckless or don't take time to consider possible edge cases. In the real world, you have to put thought into solving problems. So taking the time to ask clarifying questions and sharing your thoughts is a good way to showcase that skill. If you have trouble with this, here are some tips to keep in mind. If you're struggling with asking clarifying questions, it helps to try and break the problem in your head. What I mean is to try and think of extreme inputs or edge cases that are relevant to the problem. For example, if the input is a string, you can ask if the input can be an empty string or a really large string, possibly containing a thousand characters. In my opinion, the input or inputs to a problem are the lowest hanging fruit that you can look into to gain a better understanding of the problem. Another example is just simply confirming the output with the interviewer, like will this function return a boolean? Another benefit of asking these questions is that sometimes a little extra breathing room you get is enough to let you think more clearly about things. In any case, those are just some ways you can demonstrate better communication skills during your next coding interview. By asking the right clarifying questions, you'll start to see potential edge cases you might need to cover for a successful solution. This ties into the next tip, which is programming defensively. What I mean by this is writing code in a way where you are always conscientious of potential issues that could significantly impact the runtime or efficiency of your algorithm. It's not enough to get the right answer. Your answer also needs to be resilient too. One thing you can do is validate any input parameters. For example, if the input is zero, then perform some sort of logic before any other code is run to check if an input of zero will cause any adverse effects. Of course, this was just an example, but this tip ties well into the last one because if you ask the right clarifying questions, then any edge cases should be apparent. In any case, most if not all coding interview problems have edge cases of some sort. So it's your job to be able to figure that out. Trust me, there is nothing worse than writing a seemingly solid solution to a problem only for the interviewer to ask you, what if the input is empty? If your function falls apart that easily, it's not a good look and the interviewer will make a note of that mistake. Another important thing you should do that ties into what we just talked about is test your code. You can do this after writing your solution so you can do any last minute checks of your logic to see if there are any glaring issues. By doing this, you signal to the interviewer that you're detail oriented and that you take time to review your code for mistakes. Another advantage of this is that it's your last chance to potentially save yourself from a dumb mistake that you overlooked. Seriously, test your code. It can only ever benefit you. All right, that's it for tip four. Now let's look at our final tip for this video, which is knowing your trade-offs. You know the phrase, there are many ways to skin a cat. Well, that also applies to software engineering. Most coding questions have various solutions. Sometimes in order to do something more efficiently, you have to introduce drawbacks. A classic example of this is introducing more space, usually in the form of a data structure, to improve the algorithm's overall runtime. But trade-offs manifest in a number of ways. Some ways include implementation, time and space complexity, and even maintainability. The best way to implement this tip is to just follow a proven problem-solving process. Basically, start with a quick and dirty solution. It doesn't have to be optimized at all. Then discuss any glaring issues or bottlenecks present in your solution. Your final solution should then optimize your previous solution's inefficiencies. By following this process, you show the interviewer that you can identify shortcomings of your solutions and use that information to optimize or potentially introduce some trade-off if need be to improve the runtime. You also demonstrate a deeper understanding of the problem because if you can talk about trade-offs, then you have to understand the problem well enough to do that. Now, these tips are designed to help you stand out against other candidates during the coding interview, but you have to get invited to an onsite first before any of these tips become relevant. That's why I know this video right here will help you out. I cover pretty much everything you need to know from applying to jobs, networking, and other useful coding interview tips, all designed to help you land your next software engineering job. In any case, I hope you found value in this video, and I'll see you in the next one.